tell me in your words why you choose to work with students. Oh my gosh. Well, it's been a passion of mine since I was young. I was a teacher in my, my first career. So I loved working with kids. I worked with, um, I was a teacher for gosh, probably like 10 or 12 years. And then that passion stayed with me, but I just got a little bit tired of, um, all the democ or all the politics, I guess, around teaching. Yeah. So I moved up to LA and thought that was a good time to kind of, um, break away from that and found, you know, other jobs and stuff, but I always want to work with students. I'm also, you know, not just students, but lifelong learners. I think people should try to continue to learn forever. So trying to instill that in students, you know, and plus like, gosh, the kids are our future, right? I mean, what's going to happen if we don't help, we have to help them as much as possible, push, you know, lift them up, push them forward. We want a better life on this planet after we're gone, you know? So my reason for working with the young people these days. That resonates so much with me. And I think all of the listeners on the EBFC show are lifelong learners. Absolutely. And when I met Paulette, she was trying to have a conversation with somebody and, you know, our auras just like crossed (laughs) in and we were like, "Hmm, somebody I need to talk to and know both of us at the same time. It was pretty incredible. We even did a uh, TikTok uh, together right away. I think it was within the first like six minutes of meeting each other. So you're, you're one of the first people I'll, I'll drop a link to that TikTok in the show notes below for people to watch Paulette's TikTok debut. Oh, my first and only TikTok. And then, and then look at what it's led to my first podcast. I mean, I'm so, I mean, that was so much fun meeting at that Build California conference. You know, I mean, the networking in this industry is just fantastic. So I think we were meant to be there together. We are people. (laughs) Buckle up. This is a good construction podcast show. (laughs) Welcome to the EBFC show, the easier, better for construction podcast. I'm your host, Felipe Engineer Manriquez. This show is all about the business of construction. Today's episode is sponsored by Bosch Refine My Site is a cloud-based construction collaboration platform that applies lean principles to enable your entire team to plan, communicate, and execute in real time. It's the digital tool that works in tandem with your last planner system process and puts it all together in one simple collaborative ecosystem. This easy-to-use platform is available in English, German, Spanish, Portuguese, and French, and can be used on desktops, tablets, and mobile devices. According to Spencer Easton, Scheduling Manager at Oakland Construction, Refine My Site, in my opinion, is the best, leanest tool on the market for the last time. Here's what our users have to say. We've looked at three other digital scheduling platforms and none compare to the straightforward approach Refine My Site takes. From milestone planning all the way down to daily tasks, this program gives every general contractor and their trade partners meaningful collaboration, accountability, and KPIs. Register today to try Refine My Site for free for 60 days. Today's show is also sponsored by the Lean Construction Institute, LCI, is working to lead the building industry and transforming its practices and culture. Its vision is to create a healthy and thriving industry that delivers outstanding project outcomes every time for everyone. Check the show notes for more information. Now to the show. Welcome to the show, Paulette Dallas. Paulette, we are both lifelong learners. We were talking before the show got started and we have so many things in common. And I, and I tell I'll say it again, that when I first met you, just being close to you, I knew that we were birds of a feather and we needed to flock together. So I am so happy to be a part of your debut first of many podcast episodes, highlighting some of the amazing work you do with students filtering into and becoming future leaders in the construction industry via the ACE mentoring program. Paulette, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. This is very exciting. This is the most exciting Friday morning I've had all year. Yeah. And (laughs) for people listening, it is the winter of 2023. California is being inundated by rain and Paulette and I are safe and recording the show. And as long as the internet continues to hold Paulette, (laughs) we're going to be fine. This, this is all going to the cloud and I will snatch it from the cloud before the rain gets in my way. Uh, later today. 
<laughs> please do. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Could you please tell people about the work that you do with our construction future leaders, the future of our world, the legacy, the amazing young people, all that? Yeah. So I work for an organization called ACE Mentor program and I work for the national office. We are an organization that's been around for about 30 years. We mentor high school students and we introduce them and get them excited about the construction industry. What I love about ACE, it's for any student. So when you hear construction, you might think, oh, whatever, some students want this, some students don't, but it's for any student. So if you want to go to, if you're on a college path, we have, you know, a career and a pathway for you. If for whatever reason you don't want to go continue on after high school, I don't blame you after the last few years of sitting around and you want to be just out and about and you want to go straight into the industry, we have a path for you there too. So that's my, you know, when I talk about lifelong learning, I love ACE for that, you know, and then there's a place for ACE throughout your entire career, if you would like. Um, we're really ramping up our entire throughput program. So what this means is we used to really just focus on high school students and, you know, we mentored them, got them excited, and then we kind of just threw them into the world. Okay, well, come back to us when you need a job, right? <laughs> now we're like really filling in that middle section. So when they graduate from high school, we have a brand new program called Transformative Partners. We're taking those students, we're mentoring them all through college or whatever path they're taking until they get into a job. So what that we're starting high school externships, we're paying high school students 20 bucks an hour. It's about, we have all kinds of different programs, our one stipend program that we have that really is trying to engage local firms to get involved with ACE is a stipend program where we will take over the payment and HR part for that high school student if you will host them in your office. So that's 80 oh. hours a week at 80 hours over the summer. We'll pay them 20 bucks an hour at 1600 at the end, and you've had a student in your office for 80 hours. Incredible. So I think we're the first to do that, you know. I think you are. And that uh, as I'm driving by in uh, all over California in the United States, I see help wanted signs everywhere at all of these different organizations, you know, from fast food restaurants, retail, just everything and everywhere. It's so cool to see that you've got a program that's going to help high school students. And I'm even more excited about mentoring people in college to get through because I'm in my family. I'm one of the first uh, to go through school at uh, and get my undergrad in electrical engineering i think i'm actually the first electrical engineer in my family now that i think about it <laughs> we've got the we've got lots of other professionals that have gone since but in the beginning when you're the first one it can be really tough so what kind of feedback are you hearing from the kids in this new program oh yes it's brand new but the feedback that we've gotten has been so great just last you know just like last night we had so we started a national scholarship program from um, cmic funded it it's been fantastic and we've been able to give national scholarships in addition you know affiliates all give their own scholarships but over that we've been able to really help these students so we had a student that reached out to us yesterday you know, that she's like, I'm looking for an internship. So we're placing these students in internships there. It's giving them a safe space to come back and just ask for any kind of help that they need. Part of that program is not just helping with academics. It's also helping with life, you know, life skills, life training. When you're in college for the first time and away from home, it might be a little scary or you might not know something. Maybe yeah. your parents don't, or you don't have anyone to talk to. Or I remember talking to ACE students way back when, I mean, I started in ACE in 2009. So I've been here for yeah. a long time. I started in LA and now you know I'm with national, but when I was in LA, I would talk to students. I mean, I don't, I'm not a construction background. I'm you know, elementary school teacher, sociology major. It was just, you know, checking in just to make sure they were okay. I remember one student, um, I still talk to him a lot. He's on a board with me now. He was going, you know, he I really encouraged him to do a semester abroad. He didn't think he was going to be able to. So it's just been great to be able to have those students to be able to have a space to come and ask any questions, you know, get that support. I think it's been all very, very positive. Yeah, Paula, I mean, that leaves me just the power of networking. Now that you're, you've worked with the student a long time ago and you've been at this ACE mentoring program since 09. I mean, I think we're <laughs> like, you've been an ACE as long as I've been in construction. <laughs> so, we'll actually, keep I, our construction career started at the same time then. Yeah, just about. Yeah, just about. I think if I count my internships, it's a little bit more, a little earlier than that, but it's gosh darn close. How important is it for students to network and how you see in regular curriculum is networking something that's new to them that they have to learn? 
Yeah, it's really important. And I really don't, I know, like, you know, we're trying to tell, you know, when you're with these students, like, you know, they're meeting with like CEOs of companies at base, right? Like our, our chair is CEO of Turner Construction, Peter Dabrin. So these students are meeting with big wigs. And I don't know if they quite get that, but I think down the road, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, you know, like I was with that, you know, that person, but the networking part, you know, it's starting to get a little bit bigger with covid and being virtual yesterday, I was able to, we're putting together a virtual team that's based in Phoenix, but they're going to take a team from El Paso and a team from um, Santa Fe, right? So that network, yeah. they're going to understand, you know, how big of a network construction is. But I guess my best example of what a network, how it shows these students is we do a, a summer camp. That's my favorite thing that I work on. It's my project. It got handed down to me from the previous RD. We do it at CU Denver and we bring in students from all over the country. So last year, it was the first time we expanded across the United States. Usually it's just been the Western students. So we brought in a student from like Pittsburgh, right? So he, they come into Denver and they're yeah. meeting with all these ACE students from all over the country and they're learning, you know, they think they're at camp and they're learning, but yeah. they're really building their networks and they are starting to recognize that when they come to those kinds of bigger events. Now, what's the age range of, of uh, the kids coming to these events in Denver? The camp is um, usually about it's juniors and seniors. Um, that might change a little bit because we have the externship program now. So we might start pushing sophomores and, you know, rising juniors into camps. The juniors then would go into externships and then the seniors would get the scholarships and internships. But that's, you know, so it's since it's so brand new, we usually do the camps also because it's at CU Denver and the students have to stay in the dorms. It's like a real camp experience. And sometimes, and Felipe, some of these students have never been on a plane. Right. So part of my job is like in the morning of the flights, I have like my list and my phone and I'm like tracking all of them to make sure that someone is in Denver picking them up. So, you know, they see that too as networking, right? I'm consistently in contact with Denver from LA to make sure that they land and we get them. That's the most stressful right. part of camp. Yeah, <laughs> it's I, getting I mean, them there. <laughs> are you seeing students as young as like 15? Oh yeah, this. yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Maybe not at the, at the camp, maybe, but ACE, um, we start, they can start as freshmen, which is fan If they could get in as a freshman and do all four years of ACE, oh, that's, they're going to be, and we do have students that do that, you know? Nice. So my camp students too are, a lot of times they win our big scholarships, they get our internships, you know, and then they come back. The main, we want them to come back and, you know, mentor. Right. That's what, that's what the full circle is. That's the and name then, of the game. It yeah. is, it's true. And then also the other thing about ACE as a network, a lot of our mentors move around. So that's how new ACE programs get started. So I just started one during COVID in Idaho. A few people have been reaching out and we start, and they moved from Portland to Idaho. There was no ACE there. So they gathered up some folks and just, you know, they began an ACE program and they're kicking off next week. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Thank you. I'm started. so excited right? for them. Yes. Yes. That's amazing. How many people would you say are involved in ACE nationally? Students, like just, just the number of students, roughly. Students every year, we have about 10,000. Um, yeah, yeah. And our, we have, and mentors were this year, we're up to about 4,500 registered already or something, something close to that. I might be lying on that, but I know it's over 4,000. <laughs> I won't say you're lying. I mean, I'm, I'm asking you on the spot. You weren't ready with your statistics at hand. I should have had stuff. my statistics right here. Yeah, you're perfectly okay. And, <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm sure people listening that know these numbers cold can direct message us and give us the right numbers so we can comment the corrections as we go, but it's totally cool. Like yes. it's all part of the learning process. Absolutely. I think Absolutely. that's phenomenal The 10,000 students yep. are getting opportunities to, for internships and the networking is incredible. And like you said, you know, they transition into positions in industry and then want to reach back. I, I got to say I'm addicted to mentoring. I find so much in it, Paulette. I've been a recipient of really good mentoring and it has made so much difference when someone can show you the ropes and the tools and to help you. And then you want to give back. Like I, I feel it right now. Like I want to give back. That's part of the reason why I do the show is so that I can give back to 
even more people beyond what my calendar allows me to give back to. I love it. And, you know, also our networking, not just for the students, but, you know, for our mentors, it's like I met a, a mentor in Denver that she had moved from New York and she had mentored in a couple of different places for ACE, but she landed in Denver and didn't have any friends there. So she reached out to ACE. And within yeah. that, she was able to make some new friends and now her bestie and her are both at ACE and they've been there for, you know, 10 years. And wow. so I, I love that you're interested yeah. in mentoring because, you know, we have an ACE in Sacramento. Yeah, come on, let's we, go. We need some folks on there and you can get, you know, you get to, if you're, you have mentors, that's the ACE, you know, what helps with ACE, you know, the mentors, they're in the field, right, with the students. So they're picking the students as well. And that's kind of how the transformative partners all came together. You know, all of these big firms, they have such big marketing budgets, right? And they're just right. competing with each other. So all of our firms were kind of like, why are we doing this? Why don't we get together, come up with the program, and we'll find the right people for the right culture of each of our offices. And so they're working together now. So we're going to see how that goes, Felipe. Yeah, it's going to be better. I think people yes. working together, even competitors, you know, my philosophy, Paulette, is that you know, I think it's apropos, especially right now with what the weather's doing, rising <laughs> tides raise all ships in the harbor. So yes. we're all get better together. We still have our competitive edges, you know, for the various different parts of pieces that makes us special, but why not all benefit and rise? Exactly. Exactly. You know, I've gotten that great opportunity through ACE to sit on other organization boards. So like one that I sit on is the AAA and E and we, they, you know, they do a lot of great mentoring scholarships, but they're a membership organization. That's the thing about ACE too. I don't even know if I mentioned it. it's all volunteers. So yeah. our, our, you know, our 4,000 mentors, it's volunteers. So they are um, volunteering within the field and they are, you know, they're there on their own time. Right. So OT, as so, we call exactly. it. Yeah. OT. Yes. <laughs> Why OT your own time? <laughs> exactly. But I think that's what makes it even better because you're, it's important and it's so important. It's priceless. Yeah. You can't put a dollar value on it. Mentoring people. I know the, the mentees that I've had that have stayed in communication with me over years, some of them years. And I was happy to see one of them remember that we are still, you know, connected and, and send me a nice little happy new year. So it's good to see they're still alive. <laughs> when you don't hear from them <laughs> as often as some, you know, sometimes it's like, it could be very frequent and sometimes it's, uh, you know, just when needed, just exactly. in time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah I think it's, it's, it's like you mentioned, it's fun to get those responses, right? I got um, a postcard from a student just yesterday too. I mean, this has been a fantastic year already. Yeah. Like a postcard sent, you know, just checking in. It was just, it was just really a nice gesture from that student. So it does feel good. People, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have links in the show notes below so that you can get all the information on how you can get involved with ACE Mentoring. Paulette, how easy is it for someone in industry listening to the show to get to your website and become a mentor? What, oh, what kind so of steps easy. do they go through? Um, I, You can reach out to me directly. I will get you connected. There is, we have a brand new website that you can go right to, you can, you can find wherever you live. There's a map on there and in a map that you can put and see if there's no ACE near you, we're starting at a virtual program. Um, we're always looking for virtual mentors to be, you know, to kind of be on call for that. So you can get involved. And, and the great thing about ACE, if you want to dedicate an hour a year, we'll take you you want to dedicate your entire life will take you so oh. there, we don't say no to anybody there's a space for even if you don't want to be a mentor we need event you know we need all kinds of volunteers to run this program because like i said it's all 100 percent volunteer there's 10 people that work for ace full-time and that's it around yeah. the that's a heavy lift so i'm glad it's you a have heavy lift. Yeah. an army of volunteers to help you yeah, yeah, but you can always reach out to me directly and I will connect you. I, I'm one of three regional directors that we cover the country. I have you know, my two coworkers, you know, I would get you connected to the, exactly the right person. Beautiful. And Beautiful. I'm always happy to talk about ACE, as you know. Yeah, I know that. This is true, people. I told Paulette, <laughs> I was like, you've got to come on the show and let's bring some more notoriety to this ACE mentoring program. I've been lucky to be involved in several different companies, like the ones you already named, where ACE has been something that they partner with. So it's always been around me since I've been in construction for almost 30 years. I've been hearing about it almost the entire time you've been with it, Paula. I think that's, uh, 
What a coincidence. It is. I'd love for you to share a story about a student that you got to, you know, partner with through high school and then becoming a mentor. Like, and you can you know, just use their first name to protect their innocence or anonymity if you need to. But I'd love to hear something like how it just threads through to their final career. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can start with the um, the story. His name's Nick. He it was in a high school in my neighborhood, and I met him when I was working for LA. And he was just he was one of those students. Like if you had a fundraiser and you needed a student to just like be super dynamic and engaging, you would call on him. And people still remember his presentations from like twelve years ago when he <laughs> presented at the golf tournament and things like that. He went to slow. He, he really loved it, but I remember talking to him through how, you know, how tough it was at certain points, him being away from home. He's also first generation. His family, you know, is here. They are, they're based here in LA. Um, they have a photography shop, which is really cool. Oh. Um, and so I stayed in contact with him. He was the one that I was mentioning earlier that, you know, he went to Germany for a um, you know, study abroad program, learn German, sent me a postcard from Germany too. It was fantastic. When he came back and graduated, he started reaching back out. You know, we helped him, you know, get him some job, you know, place some jobs and things like that. And then um, he also, you know, through these years, I've just put, kept in contact with him and we still keep in touch. We're talking, I, he was just at an event with him because he's in between jobs now. So like, I'm trying to help him like figure out what he wants to do next. Cause now he's at a point where I like, Hey, I've been doing this for a long time, but now I really want to do this and not just taking what's coming to him. Right. Like I'm right. really trying to be like, you know what you want to do now. You've got a big network here, you know, use that and really find something you want to do. You know, don't get frustrated and don't stay where you don't want to fit in. And then with that too, what I've been able to do is get him introduced to the other organization that I'm also a part of. And with that, he's also met some new mentors, you know, so it's just as a nice way to keep on supporting these young people into this and, and, you know, just give them that extra push that they need and help. And I learned so much from them. That's the best part about mentoring, right? Yeah. You learn so much from these younger folks or that older, so whoever true. you're, you can be mentoring either right. direction, right? It totally can. Totally can. Yes. Paul, I love that story about Nick and how it's been so impactful for him at I, and the best part, Paul, and I'm getting all tongue tied just thinking about it, is that <laughs> you're you're making a space for him to really take the time to get what he really wants. Yeah. And I think for a lot of people, like they just go to work. Yeah. Right. A lot of people yeah. just go to work. I mean, exactly. when I was when I was young and I was picking my my major, I originally picked computer engineering. I mean, I was all by myself on a college application <laughs> and I read like you know, 16 options. And I was like, yeah, just on the words alone, ah, this looks good. I mean, that was like all that went into it. And eventually I, you know, ended up becoming a double E electrical engineer. Yep. And you mentioned yep. Nick went to, I'm assuming Cal Poly slow. Yep. He went to slow. Yep. Yep. The other cool thing about Nick, he's like a third generation ace. So like his mentor was his like, so there's three generations of ACE. His mentor was mentored by one of the original board members of ACE. Her name's Lori Gidry. She also has a, a, her own construction firm. She mentored to someone named Ty, who is now with PCL, who mentored Nick, you know, and I was just a part of all three of that, that whole three, yeah. you know, three generations of mentoring. So it's been really fun to see that, you know, that, that stack of generations of ACE mentors. That's a long thread. Yeah. It's still pulling. And then, you know, who knows how many countless people Nick has helped. Oh well, yeah, for sure. Like he's mentoring students. Yeah. So it even continues on. I'm trying to get him like, you know, really dialed into ACE. So we'll get him a new job first and then we'll get him back on. Get him. He go. is mentoring a little bit, but I was like, one step at a time. Go ahead. Yeah. We'll get you. Go yeah. It's first. okay to, you know, get your, get yourself dialed in. So it's easier to help when you're stable yes. and you're on a good solid foundation for sure. It's hard That's to help good. when you feel like you're you know, not your needs aren't being met necessarily as to the level that you used to. Exactly. Exactly. I think that's beautiful. Yeah. People, you know, hit the links on the website and definitely DM Paulette and connect with her. She is super easy to talk to. If you're not picking up these vibes right now, <laughs> how easy it is to chat. And we had a great time. We were in uh, the, what is it? The Palm Desert. We were, yeah. Yeah. We were in the Palm Desert. There was no rain. 
Oh, it's a... beautiful out there. It got oh, wait, windy. It was kind of windy, day. right? Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. like, right away, like at the same time, we're both like, yeah, it got windy. Like one day, I remember <laughs> I opened up my car door and it almost like flipped out the other way. <laughs> <laughs> pulled my hand it was so windy like it gets windy in the desert people it does get windy in the desert yeah we're not going to see any of that when we're hanging out in the la area right oh no we're just going to be looking for some fancy coffee shops to meet in my favorite thing uh, coffee shops and tacos in la anytime oh, yeah. maybe that's what we should do maybe we should go oh, to tacos 100%. Yeah, I started sure. watching uh, over the holidays, the Taco Chronicles on Netflix. Oh, yeah. That's and I a think good they one. went to LA a couple of times. So yep. there's definitely some places I want to hit out. Uh, there's like some birria taco shop in downtown LA, but we don't need to venture that far. I'm sure we could find some, <laughs> some good stuff in the oh, area. Yeah. Oh, yeah. this is true. Like people in my family know, like I've been known, Paula, to drive over four hours for lunch. <gasps> No, yeah. I knew I liked you, Felipe. I knew yeah. it. I knew yeah. it. I do you plan your vacations like around food? Like I want to go to this restaurant, so I'm going to this town. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only laughing so hard because that is always the that's the like the unspoken plan. Like yes. we'll go somewhere. Like we grew up in Chicago, which is a big foodie oh, yeah, town. Yeah. Yeah. We love there's so many good places to go eat in the city. And when we go, we try to spend as much time with family and you know, family's like, you need to eat here in the house. And we're like, <laughs> yeah, but there's like, you're in the city, like, you know, things that they take for granted because they live there every day. Yep. You know, we don't have that type of exposure where we are. So people, wherever you're at, like, if you've got a home recipe, awesome. But if you got some good stuff in town, take advantage. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I definitely plan. Like now, Paulette, as I travel, I travel quite a bit for work, as you know, and I do have some favorite uh haunts when i Ooh. go to places certain places like when i'm in phoenix there's like a couple of places i really like to go to there's a there's a taco shop like way out of the way if i like when i'm going to this one project if i swing around coming out of the airport i can be on the outskirts of phoenix and i hit there's the a tijuana inspired taco shop Ooh. in like northwestern outskirts of the city really? like, i'll have to get that from you because i go to phoenix I, you know, I like to, I love Phoenix, first of all, but I yeah. would love to get some good tacos there. And they have a, uh, I'm going to just brag on them for a second. Like it's, they have an open, like uh salsa bar that's got guac in <gasps> unlimited it. guac. No, Could no. you just imagine? I know. I'm like that's unlimited guac. <laughs> it's unheard of. That's why I had to mention it, Paul. I know you'd appreciate it. Oh yeah. It's $12 a bowl. If you want, you know, want to sit down at a restaurant for guac. Exactly. At, or 14, if they do it table side. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes I've seen uh, like right now, avocados are, they're back under $5, you know, oh, but less than a buck a piece. But uh, there was a time during the supply chain issues, Paulette, where you could be paying over two to $3 for one avocado. Oh, totally. Totally. And the worst thing about an avocado is if you let it go bad, yeah. there's like guilt involved oh and hate. God. And it's just the worst thing when you like there's, open it and you're like, I just waited I, too long. My parents tell my son of the story of brown avocados. Cause my dad is like that. He will not like, let it go to waste. He'll eat brown avocados just to send the message <laughs> to my mom that this should have been cut before and he's like very intentional how he eats it in front of her it's it is so entertaining i almost want to like just over ripen one and just like sneak it into their mix and be like dad look at this look at what mom did you know just to watch his face when oh he, my like, god suffers through it that is too funny <laughs> yeah. and so, and like people if you don't know what we're talking about when avocados go too ripe they start to smell like baby diapers <laughs> so like that that's been in perspective you know, how powerful my dad communicates with my mom. <laughs> it's those incredible. are some, what are those called? Silent, silent key or visual cues or, or smell, yeah. yeah, no word cues or something. Yeah, there's no words. <laughs> like he doesn't say anything. There's no angry tones. It's just, it's all in his face. I can't even make the face that he does, but it's priceless. It always has my son in tears laughing so hard <laughs> in that story. That's very funny. We have an interesting family. We, we like food. <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's it's the best i mean I'm, i was born in singapore and that's a big food and i haven't been back for 25 years and the, the main reason i mean i have some family still there but i'd love to see but the main reason i want to go back is to eat food yeah that's, that's a we good food trip up. that Maybe we that's do a construction yeah. a construction podcast in singapore we should we do have audience in singapore listening to the show so oh. yeah 
That's I awesome. Do. I was just listening to one of your podcasts on where you had the women in construction podcasters. Yes, I had uh, Christy and Angela oh, on the show. I just started following their show immediately and I will be listening to them. I've learned so much from your show too, actually. I don't know if anybody told you that. Um, <laughs> no, you didn't tell me yet. Tell me, Paula. <laughs> what did you learn? <laughs> I've just been listening to the stories and it's just been so great. I mean, you know, the construction people are just fantastic. Um, in between my teaching, and construction, I did a lot of mergers and acquisitions, middle market banking management, and it was great. I mean, the work is the same, but the people in construction, like that's why I just do construction now. I don't really, right. they're just the best. There you go. You heard it here. Paulette is a fan of the construction <laughs> industry. People on the EBFC show representing positive images for people in construction. There are a lot of good people in our industry. I tell my family, like I stay in construction on purpose because of the people that are involved in the industry. hundred yeah. percent. That's exactly Absolutely it. Love. It's very frustrating when I'm like, I have friends with young, you know, young daughters and, you know, sons too, but young daughters, I was like, please just introduce them into this, you know? And they're like, well, they're not going to be in construction. They're not going to be. And I was like, do they like to be on Instagram marketing them? You know, are they marketing right. there? And they're like, oh yeah, they love that. And I was like, well, guess what? Construction yeah. needs those kinds of folks too. You know, it's just Absolutely. like, we need to get the word out there. And I thought you're, those ladies are doing a great job. So they are. And uh, shout outs to Angela and Christy, Paulette, you need to contact them and tell them Felipe sent you. Ooh. So you could be on their podcast and talk about the ACE mentoring program because they are on a mission, Paulette, to transform the perception of women and underserved minorities in construction and non-traditional roles. So I think, oh, I mean, it's just like perfect. It is because that is the one area where, cause we, you know, we are doing a good, we're trying, we track our data and the one area that we consistently go up to, this is actually interesting. Our data every year, we have more and more females joining ACE, right? Mm -hmm. During the pandemic, that number kind of for women or, you know, young women dropped a little bit. The male number stayed the same. So we had the same number of male participants that didn't really fluctuate. And then the females went down a little bit. I think that's due to, you know, COVID and what the young girls are having to do at home and stuff. I don't know if that's proven, but the one awesome thing is that we are getting more and more young females to join ACE every year. And that's great. Well, like, where is it by that. percentage? Paula, I'm um, like dying to know, like, cause I, I, I know the, the percentage is 40, 40. I think that in the forties, it's very, very close. I think it's like 42%. 40, 40, okay. Yeah, yeah, 42, 44%, something like that. Um, the women that are participating and mentors, I don't actually know our breakdown of mentors. That's I think that's incredible. Me. I mean, just on the, you know, where that benchmark is, starting with the high school students at, at over 40%, that's yes. amazing. Yeah. In yes. construction in the United States, it's less than 9%. Yeah. Women make up less than nine. So, we've and got then I've a, heard from your podcast that 9%, a lot of it is not upper management. Right. You know, there's, there's none of that happening. So that's where we want to see. I'd Not like to yet. see a panel, like a panel of CEO ladies in construction firms. You yes. know? I'm meeting more and more of them. Like I'm, I'm working on a, for, for, for WIC week, women in construction week, a panel for NAWIC um, down here in LA. You should come down for that too. That's going to be Absolutely. really a good time. But yeah, well, I love if it. you invite me, I'm coming to that. Oh, I'm going to send you a whole list of things that I'm going to be yeah. at. And are you in Reno, I'm going to be in Reno next month for the big competition. Oh, that sounds exciting. I keep getting asked to, to get involved and do some mentoring in Reno because you know that I, I teach Scrum and it would make that competition so much easier for the students oh, so they can focus on their absolutely, project. Absolutely. Scrum is the one thing I've really been researching since I met you. That is a word that maybe I heard, but I didn't pay attention to. So yeah. I've been trying to research it and really get a handle I, on it. And I might have written a book easy. about it. <laughs> <laughs> I might need some of those. I might yeah. need the Cliff Notes version of that because it Thanks. is. It was everything I've learned about it is really interesting. Paulette, you can read the first and what I consider the most interesting part of the book. I mean, I love the whole book, people. I wrote the whole book, but it's available for free on Audible. Uh, um, excuse me. Oh. The book is available for free on Amazon, Kindle Unlimited. If you have an e-reader you and you're subscribed to Kindle Unlimited, you can read it for free. Go to constructionscrum.com and see all the ways to read it. You could also read the first third of the book for free via PDF. That's oh. on the website now. Awesome. And Newsflash. 
the audio version of the book is out and I'll put a, a link in the show notes uh, where people can get that everywhere audiobooks are consumed. If you have a mentoring story, this is what I encourage people to do. Share your story on LinkedIn, social platforms. Wait, I wanted to go back to, did you do your own recording for your audio? Of course book? I did. And then I got asked, I was in the office and they said, uh, someone read my book in the office and they're like, but you have some female characters in the beginning of your book. Like, and I said, I know. And I did their voices. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can't wait. So I can't yeah, wait. I know a lot of people are like dying to hear, you know, what I did there. Uh, so you'll find everyone listening, you'll find out soon enough. Well, yeah. it's true. I, I listen to a lot of audiobooks, and the reader makes a big difference. If it's a, a reader that you can't really listen to, I sometimes can't get all the way through a book. Yeah. You know? If you so, like the, the sound of this and it's, I got to talk to the people helping me with the editing. Like maybe I was too excited when I read it because I was listening to it. <laughs> And I, I listen to a lot of audiobooks on 2X or 1.5, depending, especially if I've already heard the book. Oh, really? The first time I'll go at like a 1.3, I almost never listen to anything at 1.0 because I need the reader to be exciting. Now there's <laughs> there's one nonfiction, no, there's one fiction series of The Witcher that I've listened to. And the voice actor who does that is so good. I listen to that at 1.0. Really? But it's I'll the exception. to that. Everything else is like 1.3 at the slowest. <laughs> and some books are two. Like, because really? it's just not exciting. But if you, oh when you hear gosh. it at 1.3, like, you'd be surprised how much more exciting the book gets at 1.3. <laughs> and if you think that, that it, uh, like 1.5 is too fast, play it at two for a couple seconds, to like hear a couple sentences, mm -hmm. and then slow it down to 1.5. And it sounds perfect. Real. I've never done that. I've, I've gotten, like I do a lot of walking or I try to get out and hike in the morning. I live near Griffith Park, which I'm so blessed, oh, wow. but I listen to a lot of podcasts and things. And every once in a while, accidentally, it'll go to that faster speed. And like, it almost gives me a little bit of anxiety. I like start walking faster. I start <laughs> moving faster. And I'm like, yeah. I never thought about getting, settling into that and enjoying the excitement of the voices. Yeah. There so was one chapter of the book where I was like really excited and probably speaking almost two times faster than I'm speaking right now in the book, but it was clear. And I had uh, a friend listen to it. And I said, does this sound too fast? And they're like, no, that's how you get when you talk about scrum. <laughs> <laughs> so would you call yourself like the scrum king, scrum emperor? Scrum... Actually, I just call myself scrum master and scrum trainer. Oh, yeah. I'm a yeah. scrum passionado. Oh, I love that. Yeah, love me some scrum. And I tell people like <laughs> I'm implementing it. Scrum. <laughs> I do. I love me some scrum. I'm doing scrum all the time, Paulette, like in every part of my work. So like even where I work for the general contractor company, the bolt company, ta-da. <laughs> even there, everything I do runs through the scrum process and framework. And so it's not obvious to people that I'm doing it. Like this show that you and I are on right now runs through a two-week sprint cycle. From the time that we record until it comes back from editing and it's ready to go, including like the social media, like what we're going to say, the copy, all of that happy, good stuff runs through a nice, tight scrum process. That's awesome. I'm going to have to learn yeah. a little bit more about this because I'm pretty sure we could use this. You know, we we tend to get very excited at Ace. Um, and like I said, we're a small staff, right? So we get very excited and we want to do all of these things. And we're already all doing so much oh, yeah. but then something new comes on and we're like let's do it let's do it yeah you know, and there's so I, uh on my youtube channel paula i recently recorded a section a segment of the the recording i did for the agc conference presentation mm -hmm. on scrum that i i want to say it's like three minutes long and so i'll make sure i'll put a link in the show notes and i'll send you directly that youtube video that you can yes. start doing scrum in less than three minutes that's what I need it. I need it less than three minutes and I can start implementing it right away. That you would can be start. perfect. Yeah. That would be perfect. Speaking of that conference, I know you brought up the five different generations of communications in that podcast yeah. too, which reminded Gordon, me of Gordon Fowler. I finally remembered his name, Paulette. I looked it up oh. after the show. It's Gordon Fowler, Gordon ladies and Fowler. gentlemen. Yeah. So if you're so <laughs> fascinating, it was just so, I mean, so much of it was good. I would love to hear him again. Cause I'm sure every time you probably pick up different things, you know, yeah. that he is talking about or someone else that talks about that, but I, that really opened up my eyes and actually helped me because we are a staff that's spread out 
do, I mean, we have, you know, we have 20 somethings up to 60 somethings on our yeah, staff. You've got the whole mix. We have it all. Right. And we are trying to just do it one way. And I'm trying to be like, no, after that, I was like, Oh, no wonder this doesn't make sense to our, my coworker, you know, yep. trying to tweak how I communicate and stuff like that. Too. see lifelong learner, always trying to learn. Same. <laughs> and you know, the funny thing is like, once I heard his speech and I thought more about like my generation, generation X, I have like started. The best one. <laughs> I'm glad you said I got to, you know what, Paulette, you know, when you, you do good stuff like that, you get the bell. <gasps> Thank you. Yeah. Gen, Gen X is the best one. Sorry. Sorry, Gen Z. That's a, that's a slight, right? I have high hopes for Gen Z, but yeah. Gen X, you yeah. know, and of course, sorry, have boomers. Yeah. It's like, boomers, they're cute. They are. <laughs> and you know, you should have some like pride in what your generation is. It's true. It's true. You know, except for the millennials. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We'd like I didn't say that. I'm I'm yeah. recruiting those guys for mentoring. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Or the or the traditionals, like the greatest generation question mark. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's healthy that uh, you know, you're in your cohort. You should like, you know, people of your group or at least uh identify with them. Because yes. you had some similar upbringing, you know, similar environmental conditions. It's totally cool. Yep. But I always tell people like I'm biased by my own experiences, just like you. Exactly. exactly. Which is why we, you and I know Gen X is the best. It is. It is. We're the most adaptable and, you know, we're about to rule the world. So. That's, you know. that's, Paula, you've read my <laughs> mind. I just said that this morning. I said, we're, we're now taking over. Like we're becoming in charge. Yes. I used to tell people when we were younger, like all you have to do is stick around. I was like, look around. <laughs> These people aren't going to be here that much longer. And I was like, it's going to be our true. turn soon. I said, but the responsibility for us to make it more sustainable for the future and make it better for people, yep. like that's our time right now. If you're an yep. aspiring leader and you're listening to the show and you've got some influence, like I don't care what generation you are. If you've got influence, use it to make it better for the people coming behind you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Pay it forward. I mean, we got here, you know, we're all here. We're here to help. I like to think. <laughs> Paulette, you get the last words before I send you on your way uh, with YouTube video links to start your scrum journey today. Oh my goodness. Well, Felipe, thank goodness for Build California, the AGC conference that we were able to meet up, network, connect, and vibe. And thanks for having me on. First of all, thanks for my first TikTok, my first podcast, and my first introduction to Scrum. Enjoy your mentor or get out and mentor and share your mentoring story this month. All and right. reach out to me for ACE. <laughs> Absolutely. Reach out to Paulette for Ace. All those links are there. Paulette, you're awesome. You're amazing. Very special thanks to my guest. I'm Felipe Engineer Manriquez. The EBFC show is created by Felipe and produced by a passion to build easier and better. Thanks for listening. Stay safe, everybody. Let's go build.